Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Over the Top TV. Um, my name is Riley Miller. And I'm here with my trusty Chris companion. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's been a little while, but uh, we got some news to talk about. We got a lot of stuff. Uh, provincials happened in Saskatchewan a little while ago, so we're going to dive into that today. A little bit more detail. We got the results up. Uh, anywhere you want to start specifically? Yeah, you know, um, yeah, we brought a few people up. Uh, we drove up there. Uh, we brought not as big of a team as I would like to have brought, but it was you, myself, uh, Dylan, who's our lightweight guy, uh, and then both my kids, and then my girlfriend came along. Uh, but yeah, we drove up there. Uh, I mean, first thing I was curious about was what the awards looked like. I had no idea, um, but they're they're gorgeous. I'll show you one later. I, I have one here, but uh, yeah, it was a good drive up and. I, I don't know about you, I noticed, one of the big things I noticed was it was very, very well organized. Everything was extremely well organized. Yeah, it was very nice, you know. I had the trophies were taller than Dylan, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, just poking fun at the, at the, at the champ. At the champ. But, uh, no, yeah, the organization was really, really good. Um, you know, running triple, it was triple elimination too, wasn't it? It was. Running triple elimination and with how many entries there were, um, it it flew by actually pretty quick. Like some other tournaments, I we might not have been pulling until a lot later at night. And uh, no, it, it, it flew by really good. I really like how they uh, how they like to you know they get down to the finals and then they give the, the the two finalists a chance to. I mean that's that's pretty regular, but I really liked how they did that. And, um, I like the way they did the screen. They had it above camera, looking down. They had above camera looking down on the yeah. table. And it was yeah. good because, like, the people watching and everything could look over there, too, and see what was going on. Because sometimes, you know, it's hard to see around an arm wrestling table when you got two refs up there and, you know, you got arms yeah. everywhere. So that was really neat. I incorporated that into some of the video footage I uploaded about the Saskatchewan Provincial, you know, the championships there. So I incorporated some of that screen. But to show, but that was a neat idea, you know. That was one thing I forgot about, yeah. Um, you could glance over and they had a big black line down the middle so you could see where center was and you could just, everything from above, right? So it was yeah. really cool. Um, I've, I've never seen that before. No. Yeah. And then we had a decent turnout for kids' classes. So both my both my uh, kids entered. Uh, Tyson, my youngest, he went undefeated all day. He was fast, powerhouse, just massive top roll, big time hitter. <laughs> So, like, his hit alone is yeah. is actually very impressive. Um, I don't know if you get yeah. a chance, if you had a chance at practice to let Tyson hang on to him. I mean, you know, he's, <laughs> he's 12, and he you hang it's, on to uh, him, and he, he blasts into you. Like, it's... Miniature so, Curtis. Yeah. Curtis 2.0 in the making, eh? Yeah. He's got an earlier <laughs> start. He'll do better than me. Um, yeah. <laughs> but him, and then my oldest son, Austin, did very well. Yeah. Uh, he ended up with a couple second-place finishes. So decent, not what he wanted, but uh, decent nonetheless. But that, then, that that's a good accomplishment because uh, yeah. I believe it was uh, Garth Green's son, uh, Garrett, I think is yeah. his name. Um, he's really good. He's like, really you can see that just, just like his dad. He's really good. So I mean, and, but and, and they they were some battles between him yeah. and Austin. They were battles. They were probably. Close to match, close to close to if not matches of the day. Matches they were really good. good. They went back and forth a little bit. There was some climbing, like lots of, you know, there's yeah. a lot, a lot more uh, technique involved than you typically maybe see at that level. I was very impressed. So the up and comers yeah. look super promising in the province. Yeah, yeah. lots of adjusting too. Lots of adjusting. Like it was just um, really, really good to see. You know, it's not always just. Usually, like you said, with that age, it's all that one lane, right? And like, if I can't get through here, I'm just going to try harder here versus trying to go somewhere else. Yeah. And they didn't do that, right? They tried one barrier and it didn't work. Okay, I'm going to go another way. And Popped out. Excellent, yeah. right? At that age, you know, future champions for sure. Yeah. And then go up a class. So then you start at like lightweight, I guess. So that would be Dylan's class. So Dylan, I think, you know, really we should do – uh, special on Dylan. Um, Dylan started training with me like three years ago and we're talking about a guy who 
rarely misses a practice. He's he's there every time, and he trains hard. And most of the time, like yep. when he got into it, like you weren't there. There's a few other guys that weren't there, so he was really training with like you know three heavyweights, right? you know, or two heavyweights and a super heavyweight. And I mean, so he got used to you know, our big hands and everything, and. You know, he, he had to keep showing up and, you know, he really grinded it out and and he's a success story in himself. I don't know if you know much about Dylan's background. I won't give it away here, but he has, he, he's had an interesting life, that guy. And uh, yeah. he's never won a trophy in his life. He's never won a competition ever in his life. And, you know, he trained hard and he came out to provincials and he went home with, with, with champion, he, both arms. It was yeah, incredible. Man. Like, you know, the guy, the guy was seriously holding back tears, man. He was, that was, you know, in his life, like it's an accomplishment unto itself, but even more so to somebody who's never won anything to go from that to you're now the Saskatchewan provincial lightweight, you know, champion, both arms. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Like it's, you could definitely see it sitting in the corner when he walked back and I mean, him walking up to the table, just the level of intensity that he has is is really good. He's got a really he's got a great ability to just work at like optimal intensity without having any sort of adrenaline dump. He goes up there and he's just firing on all cylinders like at all times and he just doesn't get tired, right? But then coming back when he knew that he won, I think at first when he just made the finals, he was like he was like, oh, okay. like he surprised himself maybe a little bit, but then yeah, winning both arms, um, yeah, he <laughs> looked like he was holding back a little bit. And I mean, that's that's the great thing about arm wrestling is uh, people that have different uh, backgrounds and they haven't maybe they didn't do a whole lot of sports in high school or you know whatever it is, they just didn't get these opportunities, and now they do, and. You get to be a champion, right? And yeah. It's a great accomplishment. You are number one in Saskatchewan, both arms. So basically anybody who's 176 pounds or under and you live in Saskatchewan, Dylan will probably kill you. Dylan will probably kill you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, dude trains hard. So, yeah, he dominated dominated the lightweight class. Complete dominant. Yeah. 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 I think he, I don't, I think he lost one match all of it. Yeah, and that, that was probably – was that Garth? Um, that might have been Garth because Garth is pretty dangerous. But Garth is, is like a 154 guy, I think. Mm-hmm. Like when you go to Nationals, I think Garth, Garth is there a we 154 go. guy. So – Yeah, and I'm looking, and there was, you know, on the right, five people in his class, um, three people on the – yeah, it looks like three people on the left. So, I mean, five in a class, I mean, that's no joke. Yeah, that's that's a that's a stacked uh, <laughs> it's a stacked card. Like um, even a five guy tourney that can take a lot of your arms. Yeah, especially but, uh, triple elimination. Yeah, you got a lot of pulling to do. You know, I've been at tournaments where there's just three guys, and I mean, when there's just three guys in the class, if you're the guy stuck in the middle, it's a long day for you. <laughs> yeah, if you're the middle guy in the bracket, but. Uh, no, yeah, the yeah. more in the class, it's 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 a uh, it's a lot of miles on the arm that day, for sure. So, yeah, I think he slept good that night. Um, yeah. all right, yeah, now definitely. bumping up, we have yeah. one seventy seven uh, to two hundred nine pound class. We're looking at like yeah. a nine person class here. Oh yeah, they were they were crazy, right? <laughs> and everybody was just iron strong. Mm. Yeah, like they were good. Yeah, so um, you got you got names like you got uh, you got your Riley Miller in there. You got Clayton Turcott, yeah. Caden Esmond, right? Kane Hempstein, um, Eric Squires. So you you know um, Brandon Olson, the Duke from Moose Jaw, uh, Dalton Shaw. Yeah. You have all this. You have these up and comers, kind of you know filling out the out the you know filling out the class, and then you have some very very competitive guys in this class. That that's a stacked yeah. class. Nine, nine guys, all, you know, most, most are good. Yeah, like one thing I wanted to talk about with that was, you know, <laughs> even though I didn't get as good of a turnout, was this is still my favorite provincials because of how deep the classes were. 
like the year, like I've won a provincial championship left hand. And I'll be the first to tell you the year I won, it was a three guy class. I, yeah, it, it's just not as uh, satisfying to me. Like I'm always harder on myself than anybody else is. Right. So the year I won, I won, but there was three of us there. This one was the true test. And yeah, there's some killers. It's what you were asking. It's what you were asking for. Remember on the way there, you're like, I hope there's a lot of guys there. And there was exactly. Um, Yeah. So I'm just looking when I read out those names, the nine, that was left arm. Right arm, there's eleven. Yeah, yeah, even more. Eleven in a triple elimination. Man, you're putting that's usually what you see. Yeah. (laughs) Usually see a couple more on the right arm. A couple guys don't like to pull left. It's just the more righties out there, but yeah, just they were they were they were long classes. Um, that was stacks. You're looking at your top but, top guys there. I mean, from first down, like you have uh, Kate yeah. Esmond, actually Brad Esmond's son. He pulled out yeah. first. You got Clayton Turcott in second. Uh, I don't want to butcher his name. Mike Koshin, maybe K O C H N. Um, yeah. Carrot River. So he took third. That was impressive, <clears throat> man. I saw him get. He got a weight on Kane Hamstein, I believe. Yeah, that, he beat. That was he beat impressive. Kane. Flashed him, I think. Yeah. Scary pin. Yeah, it was good. And then you have Kane Hampstein in fourth. Incredible, right? You see someone at Kane Hampstein's level who's been in the sport uh, a little bit longer yeah. than I have. And you see him taking, you know, a fourth place finish at a provincial level. Like, we're talking about yeah. like, Dane's place, all right, <laughs> at nationals, right? Like, he's and he's been around. That guy has been in the sport a good long time. Yeah. And that's not saying what's wrong with Kane. That's like, no oh, crap, right? It's not. COVID has... <laughs> possibly deep in the waters a little bit clearly yeah, yeah clearly yeah and I, you know and you know kane's a busy guy i i get it that guy runs several companies and he's super busy with his kids and and he does a lot uh but yeah still like for him to take a fourth that shows you how much people have been training right and then yeah he got down to yeah. then you got fifth brad esmond uh down and then riley miller you got yourself in sixth there my friend uh brandon yeah. olison in yeah. seventh richard ryan down in eighth which is insane because he's he can be a tricky bugger. That guy's really good. Yeah. Uh, Guy yeah. Jennings, Dalton Shaw, and then rounded up with Eric Squires. So, you know, good bunch of arm wrestlers. That's not – there's no one brand new in that whole group. Yeah, they're all names uh, heard before for sure. Yeah. Um, like you said, Richard Ryan placing eighth. Like, right. He's a solid dude. Um, yeah. Really, really impressive. So, yeah, that was a very, very deep field. Yeah, he's fast. Yeah, Mike, Mike Cochin. That's one I wanted to talk about. Like, oh my goodness, he was good. I, I believe that's the guy that broke his arm. Yeah, uh, Joel, our yeah. Joel, our teammate broke his arm. Yeah. yeah, that was the same day as I had a super match, and then Ryan Espy faced uh, uh, Big Rich Lupkies. Yeah, same tournament. Yeah, yeah, fit to fight. A fit to fight one yeah yeah it was because that was at the bar at the night right but the event the open class tournament was at a mall at the lawson mall so yeah that, lawson was, Heights, that yeah. was where it happened i remember joel hitting and it was like crack right you get that loud bang sound. Oh. <laughs> it was loud yeah it was very loud even in a mall it was loud not, not a good thing to hear and he was just like i'm good i'm good and everybody's yeah. like no no you're not he took it <laughs> like a go champ, to the hospital. Though. He yeah, he was like, like no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm just going to keep – I'll stay here. Yeah. <laughs> Use the camp, and he obviously came back stronger because, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, a beast. Um, yeah, came back stronger, and like I said, yeah, I remember I saw him the one match there, he flashed Kane Kane Hampson. I was just like, okay, yep, guy's a little bit dangerous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> I never ran into him, so I never got to feel it. But after yeah. I seen that, I was like, okay, maybe I don't want to run into him, eh? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And how did, how did you feel, like, going in and at the end? Uh, I, I, I know you didn't get the placing yeah. you wanted, but you definitely got the classes you wanted. Oh, yeah. Like, it's easy to look at the result and be like, oh, yeah, it wasn't a good day. But I felt I went in feeling as strong as I have. Like, I felt top-notch. Yeah. Currently, yeah. I feel uh, I don't think I've been stronger. Like, I, I really don't. So, yeah, like there's zero excuses. It was a solid, solid class. So, a solid class. yeah. 
Yeah, you did good, man. You had some worse. You didn't, you didn't, yeah. and even getting to that point, like getting to yeah. the position you got, like the placing you got, like you had wars and some good wins and some tough fought matches. Like, it's not like you're getting flashed at the table. Like, you've been making crazy gains training with us and then, you know, doing whatever yeah. you can on your own, too. No, it's been a good, uh, it's been a good, what, eight months or so already. Like, it, training in the Bridge City Club and, yeah. Um, kind of, I don't know, rounding off all my, all my, uh, my weak spots. And uh, yeah, I feel like I, I went into that having done just that. Like I felt really good. I feel like the me that won in 2019 wouldn't touch the me now. So it's just saying, yeah, like I, <laughs> people might look at the results and be like, Riley, what happened? Nothing. I felt good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just a high caliber and then just yeah. grow off it, I guess. Right. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Right on. Okay, well, that's big fellas. Anything else? Yeah, about jumping up uh, to the supers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Probably one of the last times I'll be pulling supers for a while. Um, I'm already down 12 pounds from, or I'm well, not 12 from then. So I'm down mm -hmm. still another. So it's been a couple weeks. So I think I'm down like six pounds from then. So well on track to be yeah. the 220s for nationals. And then I'll probably stay around there. I just put on some weight, some COVID weight, like everybody else. Like I put on a lot of strength too, but I definitely put on some little bit of extras. So getting rid of those right now. And once I clean up, I tend to stay pretty clean for a while. So should be able to stay there, yep. but uh, felt good going in. Uh, the only concern I had going into provincials was I had strain, strain through my index finger tendon on my left hand. Um, it was just strain, didn't hurt, uh, but it would, it would tire out. And I was just working it and working it. And, it was, you know, I tried to leave it alone. And I tried to work it. And I worked it with different, like, heat heat on it or ice on it. And, you know, I left it alone for the week before. So I, it didn't hurt at all going into provincials. But it, it took a lot of wear and tear. Because I remember by the time I was at the tail end of, uh, approaching the tail end of master's class. Because I pulled master my first time qualifying to be master's. I was uh, turned 40 last July. So it was my first time qualifying to pull nationals. And uh, yeah, I went through that. And after, by the end, it was interesting. You look at some of the video and I couldn't even close my index finger. It wouldn't. So I'm pulling <laughs> yeah. through a lot of this. So a lot of bail out, get strapped. So I could use the strap as, you know, something to hang as on your, to. As your, yeah. Your, yeah, but your it anchor. was, yeah. I, and still, it's not an excuse. I still, I, I, I firmly believe that the placings wouldn't have changed had it not worn out because it was just, who I had lost to and, and, and everything. It was just high caliber, like Solomon Latimer. Yeah. Um, he got, he got a couple wins on me. I lost the last one in the finals, um, on fouls, unfortunately, but, uh, yeah. And then, then Joel, Joel came in and it was funny cause he talked to me after he's like, why are you giving me so much? I'm like, I'm not, I can't pronate <laughs> at a diagonal angle. I can't pronate, you know, in towards myself. So it was all, yeah. I ended up transitioning through the event in the open class to more of a, instead of a, rising angle top roll is more of a straight across and then you know yeah. kind of like a half high hook ish and then coming up and over so i could kind of curl around and then blast up so it helped yeah. it helped me get through it helped me win some battles i had to fight my way back from the c class on the left arm uh so yeah that was that was that was nuts and then but yeah like my right arm was solid i gotta have wars with gaber uh you know, Steve Gaber, um, and I wanted that because I really want another shot at him because last time he was able to play with me, and uh, this time I may have been the only guy to stop him straight up and down for a little bit, and then I yeah. just started to go out. I couldn't. I was fully, <laughs> you watched the video. Yeah. I was full sand. I was fully committed into that. I, I oh, just it was, hang on. If, uh, if Austin and Garrett weren't match of the day, it was uh, it was Curtis and Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys must have pulled like fifteen times. <laughs> yeah, I loved it. I loved it. I loved that yeah. he beat me. I really did. You know, I I was, great, I, I was uh... disappointed in some <laughs> second place finishes, but I was uh, I was yeah, it was it was still awesome. I, I really wanted to face a monster there, and I mean around here, my right arm has been like untouchable. Like Joel didn't pull right. Uh, at this event, but um, I know where I stand with Joel Wright, and it's you know I, I should be able to take that any time right now. Uh, but left, yeah, he he's he's getting pretty scary. I uh, but yeah, it was big stack class. Uh, you're looking at 
Um, so Steve Gaber, myself, uh, that was right arm from Masters and in the Open. Uh, so it was in that order. Yeah. And then you have like Sheldon Short, uh, Solomon Latimer, Steve Rample, and Mitch Simon. I don't know if I got a chance to pull him, but uh, you know that was that was in the right. And then the left, you had in first place, you had Joel Hansen, uh, our teammate, myself, Sheldon. Solomon and then Steve. That's uh, yeah. it's big boys, man. The, the big guys don't mess around. They got a lot of horsepower in there. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. It's uh, the only thing. Like the only thing that I think could have been more interesting is if they did the open first and Masters after. That's the only thing. And I mean, most of the most of the killers were pulling Masters anyways. Yeah. I think, but I mean, yeah, like you and I think almost every other guy pulling masters did the open as well. So you're pulling four classes. Yeah, <clears throat> that's a lot of miles, you know. That's a lot. And of miles. like you said, every single guy in that class was like Steve Rempel. I've never heard of him before. I don't think, but when he walked up to the table, I was like, Jesus, who's this guy? Like, he's crazy, crazy looking arms. Yeah, I you heard know? his name. He's out of PA, right? I believe. I think so. Because yeah. he wants to come train with us. After the event, he yeah. talked to me and we exchanged numbers. And he's going to come. He's going to drive from PA to Saskatoon on a Tuesday or Friday and come train with us. So. Oh, That'd right on. Good. Yeah. Be, add some more horsepower to the practice, more than there already is, which is already a lot. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely Small. yeah man that was it was well-rounded that was a you know a good size class and yeah like masters men's open was eight people um yeah you had five left you have it's yeah Ma uh, masters men's open was nine people uh, including kane hampstein Masters men open um was was pretty impressive that was that was right and then you had like so steve gaver myself solomon and then kane hampstein in fourth again so that goes to show you like like he's yeah. very competitive yeah. and you see kane at fourth you know it was you know probably a decent tournament um and then you're at brad asman sheldon short uh paul levante Derek laframboise and then richard ryan at ninth like man. yeah like uh i think the masters open was the most stacked class there. Typically, the most hard to win class is the the open open, right? There's the open super heavyweight. Yeah, I think at this one it was the Masters super heavyweight. Yeah, well, we're all fresher too in the Masters, right? So it yeah. was, you yeah. know, I uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, it, it dude, yeah, it was awesome. I, I and and funny thing, I still have like weakness through here i uh yeah. if anyone has any advice about healing tendons and stuff comment below okay <laughs> i i'm always eager to learn and i know i've been you know taking it easy on it because i didn't realize before i was way overworking it you know and trying to heal it like with muscles i you typically do high reps and promote blood flow and stuff in there and promote the healing but turn out tendons are a little different apparently so i was doing it wrong so now yeah. definitely time to let it rest. But uh, otherwise, good to go and well on track for nationals. And then are you are you going to Absolutely. nationals? You're going to nationals this year, right, brother? I'm not sure yet. Oh. Um, I have a uh, I have an Ontario trip for sure. I got to make this summer. Not sure when it's going to be. Um, so that takes priority over anything at the moment. Yeah. And uh, other than that, I'm not sure if I'll be out to Winnipeg or not. But. Um, that it, it probably has to be the most stacked nationals too, just for the same reason as provincials was. There just hasn't been one since Edmonton in 2019, right? So I think everybody's going to be <laughs> gunning for that gold medal. And uh, you got a tattoo to get. So I got a tattoo. I, I, I said I get a tattoo if I get first. That's a. Yeah, that would be a hell of a time. <laughs> I'm gunning for it, man. I think uh, yeah. if I can do how I'm doing in the supers, I'll be curious to see how I can do in 220s. Because especially yeah. considering that yeah. you know uh, I have placed top three at nationals in 220s before, and that was before a boatload of work. So yeah, it should be interesting. I think supers is almost impossible because. SP's yeah. gonna show up, and he's yeah. there's no beat. SP, <laughs> just, and a whole bunch of monsters could whoa. show up. Yeah, scary. 
Um, yeah, no. I'm running to that glass. No, no. Yeah. Two no twenties. <laughs> no, I'm out of there. Yeah, there's some killers in all the classes, but. Yeah, there is. Yep. You're not. You're running from one fire to another, but still. When SP, <laughs> when SP can just like, y- y- like the killers in all the other classes, like they at least get into some wars. I think. Like when I was in Edmonton, SP was just. It didn't matter who he was going up against. He was just sitting there, and he would like almost let them hit, and then. Boom. <laughs> It was just, it wouldn't even move past Senate. Like, it was insane. He did that Masters and Open, all four. That's so. a level, man. <laughs> uh, goals, I guess. I guess goals. so, eh? Really, really oh, yeah. high ones. I was going to show you. Here's one of the trophies from Saskatchewan Provincial. So I got to be careful where I hold it here because it's going to cut out on my screen. But yeah. yeah, they're nice. They're a really nice award. Yeah, real nice. Go invisible. Um, <laughs> but they're cool. They're cool. A decent cool. sized award. And yeah. It's a cool feature. So yeah, they go invisible so that you can store them really easy. Yeah, watch. Right? They disappear. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's stored really easy. But no, yeah, they are nice. Though. Very nice awards. Yeah. And they had even trophies for the youth class, which my kids were actually ran raving about. So yeah. Well, that's that the same thing, right? Like, yeah. um, like you want, you want like youth are the future of the sport. And you want them to stick around, so I mean, why not give them trophies too, right? Right. Make make them like the sport, make them want to stick around, and I mean, yeah, give them trophies. There's no better way to do that, right? So. Yeah, it sure helps. You know, when you got that sitting in your bedroom on your counter or whatever, it's you know, it's it's shine, yeah. it shines, stands out. Gives you something to shoot for, and yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. But yeah, no, all in all. Uh, very successful provincials. I heard they had record numbers for entries, which yeah, I can attest to. I've been to provincials where it was like, you know, three people in my class. Um, yeah. I've done that, but yeah, this was uh, a serious game changer. And then you look at, you know, who placed here. I mean, that's a lot of strong entries for nationals. I agree. Yeah, it's going to be, I mean, like, yeah, across all the provinces, there's going to be some killers and Saskatchewan is not uh, not short by any means. Like it's going to be interesting to see those top guys go and battle it out with the other provinces, right? Like BC's got killers, Alberta. I'm really looking forward to it. So. Yeah, yeah, me as well. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, it'll be, great. be. Yeah, yeah, culmination of names, that's for sure. And then. Yeah, I mean, really, that's it uh, for the provincials. But there's a ton of arm wrestling news. A ton of stuff's been going on over the past couple of weeks. Uh, we yeah. didn't want to make a crazy long video here because just because. Um, so what we're going to do is, yeah. right, rather, we're going to make another video tomorrow. Yeah, and... there's just so much to talk about. Like we, could, we could sit down and do a two-hour video, but <laughs> <laughs> easily. But we just yeah. might as well break it up. So Yeah, yeah, for sure. Keep it simple. Um, but, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's it. That's it. That's the Saskatchewan Provincials. And uh, we're going to cover a lot more um, as the rest of Canada and the rest of the big news. Uh, we're going to do that video tomorrow and get that up. And I'll get this edited tonight and get her up. And uh, that's it. Just keep everyone po- keeping everyone posted and what's going on, right? It's nice to have more of a Canadian-focused news. And I really want to talk to people like organizers or, you know, competitors of other provinces and find out how their provincials all went to and who the big names were and just keep that news around it's kind of nice to know right because all you hear about you know on youtube and stuff is the same you know 10 names or so (laughs) so yeah exactly like and like you said promoters like like other provinces in terms of um like provincials and stuff but then just other events like you got like guys like dalbor bagrich that's a dude that deserves like a lot of recognition, right? Doesn't get a lot of talk on YouTube. Does great, great things. Um, you know, guys like uh, like Kane Hampson, he gets quite a, quite a bit with Fit to Fight. I hope he's coming back. You know, Jeff Frank, Nelson Torque, all these types of dudes, right? So, um, yeah, it's going to be great, especially this summer. It's going to be some good stuff coming up. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Lots to look forward to. But for today, that's it. But we will be back tomorrow with a new episode uh, covering more news about what uh, the rest of Canada and parts of the world is going on. But that's it for today. Thank you for joining joining us today. Um, I'm myself, Chris Kaczynski. Thank you for coming out. Hi, Riley Miller. Thank you as well.
uh, thank you for tuning in and stay tuned for much, much more to come. Love Anything it, man. Else you'd Drip like and to... rip. Drip and rip. <laughs> <laughs> I love it.